Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video for Algebra 1, we're going to talk about recursively defined sequences. So, so far in Algebra 1, you've probably covered arithmetic and geometric sequences, okay? And those two sequences are what we call explicit rules, okay? So that's this first definition we see at the top. It says it gives a sub n as a function of the term's position number, which is n in the sequence, okay? So if you want to review arithmetic um, or geometric sequences, check out the links in the top right hand corner right now. Now for this video, a recursive rule, it gives the beginning term of the sequence, so a sub one, and a recursive equation that tells how a sub n is related to one or more preceding terms. So recursive rules are very helpful because we can get some types of um, sequences that are neither arithmetic nor geometric, but we could still write a recursive rule for that equation to help us figure out any term that we want in the sequence, okay? All right, so let's talk about what these equations look like, okay? So the recursive equation for arithmetic sequences, we have a sub n equals a sub n minus one plus the common difference. So if you think back to the explicit rule, this would be a sub n equals a sub one plus the quantity n minus one times the common difference, okay? So the recursive rule here is in white, and the explicit rule here is in yellow. For the geometric sequence, our recursive equation is a sub n equals r, which is our common ratio, or what we're multiplying by, and times a sub n minus one. And if we think back to our explicit rule is a sub n equals a sub one times the common ratio raised to the n minus one power, okay? So a lot of similarities between recursive and explicit rules, and we're actually gonna translate between the two at the end of this video. So let's get into our first couple examples. We just wanna write the first terms of each sequence, so let's just see what these recursive rules look like, what they are asking us to do. So remember, we're gonna be given the first term in the sequence. So here we say, hey, a sub one is three. Now we look at our rule, it says a sub n minus one plus seven. So this plus seven right here, that is our common difference, okay? That means we're just adding seven to the previous term, which is what a sub n minus one represents. So I just say three, 10, 17, 24, and 31. And that would be my five term sequence. And we know I can finish this off with an ellipsis because it continues on forever. If we were to graph that, right, arithmetic, that would graph as a linear function. Okay, so those points would be in a line on the graph. Now we look at example two, we have a sub one equals two, so there's our first term. But now notice we have a geometric recursive rule. We are multiplying now by four, so r or four would be r, which is our common ratio, okay? So now we have two, four, excuse me, times four. So two, eight, 32, uh, times four, we have 128, and finally, 512, okay? So that would be our five terms for that geometric sequence. All right, now let's write a recursive rule in example three, and then we're gonna start translating from recursive to explicit, and then we'll go explicit to recursive. All right, so with our recursive rule, we wanna write down the first term in our sequence. So here we're gonna say a sub one equals negative eight, comma, a sub n equals, a sub n minus one, and now, well, let's, let's back that up just a little bit, okay? We can just write this part so far, because both arithmetic and the geometric recursive rule start off with that, okay? So now let's actually look at our sequence to determine are we adding, do we have a common difference, or are we multiplying, do we have a common ratio? Because that's gonna determine kind of what we write after a sub n equals. All right, so we have negative eight, negative one, six, 13, and 20. So it looks like we are adding seven, right? Plus seven, plus seven, plus seven, plus seven. So now I can continue on and I can say a sub n minus one plus seven. And that would be my recursive rule for that sequence, okay? So this tells me I start with negative eight and any term that I want to find, right? So we know the third term is six, right? So the third term means I would take a sub three, so a sub three minus one plus seven. Well, a sub three minus one would be a sub two. A sub two is my second term, which is negative one. We add seven to negative one and we get six. Okay, so we know we're good. So this would be our answer there, okay? 
All right, now let's look at example B here. 405, 135, 45, 15, 5. Okay, so we are exponentially decreasing there. So we could say, hey, we're dividing, but remember our common ratio needs to be what we are multiplying by. So we are multiplying by one third here. So that's what R is gonna be. So we're gonna list our first term, A sub one equals 405, comma, A sub n equals, and now we're just gonna say one third, fix that three there, and now we can just list A sub n minus one, okay? So that's a sub one, that's our first term. And then our recursive rule, we list our common ratio times a sub n minus one. Okay, so that would be our recursive rule for that one, all right? Okay, now let's talk about translating from recursive to explicit, and then example five, we're gonna go from explicit to recursive. And these will be the last two we do. Okay, so now we're gonna translate from recursive to explicit, so here's our um, first one on example 4a, notice our first term is nine, and we are subtracting six, right? So that's our arithmetic sequence. So now we can say a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one times the common difference. And now we can just fill in our information. We know the first term is nine, so we can say a sub n equals nine plus, we leave n minus one in parentheses there, and our common difference is negative six. So now we can distribute this negative six and we can just simplify our equation. Nine minus six n plus six, nine plus six. So we get a sub n equals negative six n plus 15. Okay, and we have translated from recursive to explicit. All right, and we look at B. It says a sub one is five, and notice here our common ratio is seven. So whenever we write our explicit rule, a sub n equals, and we have r times a sub one, excuse me, we have a sub one times r to the n minus one. Okay, so with geometric sequences, um, it's probably even easier. We don't have to do all the work that we did over here on example 4a. All we say is, okay, the first term is five, so a sub n equals five, our common difference is seven, and we have our explicit rule. Okay, so a little bit easier to go between recursive and explicit for geometric. Okay, so let's work the other way now. We're gonna translate from explicit to recursive. So the first one we look and we have a sub n equals six n minus five, so we know that's arithmetic. So we wanna say a sub one equals, um, and I'm just gonna write the number symbol for right now. We wanna find out what that number is. And then we're gonna say a sub n equals a sub n minus one, plus our common difference. Okay, that's our recursive rule. So with arithmetic, we can see our common difference, which is six, so we could plug that in for D, but we actually have to plug in one for N so we can find what our first term would be. Okay, so A sub one is gonna be six times one minus five. So A sub one equals six minus five, so our first term is one. Okay, so now I can say A sub one equals one, comma, A sub N equals A sub N minus one plus six. Okay, plus six because that was my common difference in my explicit arithmetic equation. And for the last one, a sub n equals three times four to the n minus one. So we're gonna say a sub one equals. Now with this one, we know the first term is just the number that we see listed there um, in front of the parentheses. So we're gonna say a sub one equals three and a sub n equals r times, so we're gonna say r times a sub n minus one, just like that. So we can say now a sub one equals three, comma, a sub n equals four, because there's our common ratio, times a sub n minus one. Okay, and that's a little bit about recursively defined sequences.